Hi, are you a nitrox diver and you've got yourself an analyzer and you're not sure whether the O2 sensor is out of date or the battery needs to be changed and you're not really sure how to do it? Well, watching this video will show you how to do it. Hi, I'm Andy the Northern Diver and welcome to another episode in this series of Scuba Diving Tutorials where I'll be showing you how to change the battery and the O2 sensor in your Analox O2 E2 Pro and O2 E2. So keep watching and I'll show you how to do it. If this is your first time here then, please consider hitting the subscribe button below. That way you can see all the other content we've done really easily. And at the side of that, you'll see this little bell icon. Clicking that will give you a notification every time we post a new video. Okay, let's jump straight into it. So if you've qualified as a Nitrox diver, it's a good chance that you've come across Analox as a, a producer of analyzing um, tools. So you've got the O2 E2 and the O2 E2 Pro. This one's been dis discontinued now, but probably still featured quite heavily in a lot of the books and literature that you'll see. But this is the latest model. So I've just received this from them as part of a sponsorship deal to do with an expedition that I'm running. And in that, I've, I've opened the box and realized actually there's some work to be done before I can use it straight out of the box. So one thing we need to do is add a battery, which is a square battery. Now, if you're from Wigan like me, You've probably been brought up to lick these <laughs> around your mates, you get a funny sensation. Don't do that because it's probably not good for you. We also need to add the O2 sensor which comes in a sealed packet and reading the instructions it says to be careful because there is a, an acidic electrolyte within there and if you get it on your fingers it can cause a bit of a stinging sensation. So it's very you need to be very careful to not put your fingers in your mouth while you've been mauling with this and not get any of this electrolyte on you and if you do go and wash your hands straight away. So I'd probably suggest if you're anything like me, a little bit accident prone, it might be worth putting on a, a set of gloves, you know, like nitrile gloves or the kind that you see doctors wearing in surgeries, just to keep that electrolyte off your hands if you, you, you're worried about getting exposed to it. So, first things first, you need to get your analyzer out and you're going to need a small flat screwdriver. So don't do what my dad used to do at Christmas and get the, the, the sort of knife out of the kitchen and start trying to open it because you probably slip and go free your hand and before you know it, I'm liable for your killing yourself or something. So get yourself a flat bladed screwdriver and there's just four flat headed screwdriver uh, screws in there. So you just need to undo them. Now, just to speed this video up a little bit, I've already undone them all. So you undo that and you take it away. So inside you can see this little battery compartment with the cable that pulls out for the square battery. So it's quite obvious there's a plus and a minus and you need to line them up. So the positive and neg heads may, uh, sort of match up and that way it'll connect together. So putting that together without licking it or getting your fingers caught in it, that's a pretty safe and easy job. So you just tuck that in nice and neat, make sure the cable isn't sort of bent and, and twisted. Perhaps should have turned my notifications off. Yes, yeah, so you want to make sure when that's tucked away that the cable's not got any kinks, it's not bent, it's not going to damage. And there's a little clip on the side here. I'll just bring that in, you should be able to see it. So just at the side of the battery, that holds the battery nice and snug in, in, in position. And then there's an area there for the O2 sensor. Just putting your finger inside, you can see there's a cable with a little connector. So my fingers are too fat, too many pies. So you just get in there, just sort of tease it out with a screwdriver. And you see it's quite a delicate looking cable with an extremely small plug on the bottom. So be very delicate and gentle with that. So looking at the O2 sensor then, it comes in a sort of sealed plasticky foil type bag. And there's like a little plastic cover inside it just to protect it. So I've got a pair of scissors, I'm going to open the bag nice and neatly and pull that out and just look at it. Now, this isn't the first O2 sensor I've seen, but it, it certainly is the first O2 sensor I've ever changed in here. So reading the instructions, what it says is the plug goes in the top where the sort of green bit is. So if I open that up, we can see it a bit, neat, a bit easier. So looking at the top, you can see where the plug goes and the bottom, we've got a little screw fitting which mounts into where the dome adapter goes. So I'm going to screw that in first, just nice and carefully. Now, it isn't wet in any way, so I'm not going to bother with any gloves at the minute because I don't feel that's needed. Now, there is a sort of O-ring in there, so what I don't want to do is over tighten it and put too much pressure on that O-ring. But that's just done up nice and neat there. It's not sort of wobbling. The only rattle I can hear is these screws. So I pick up my O2 E2 Pro and then I get the, the plug. Now, it's because it's so small and I'm so old, it's, it's pretty sort of intricate to get together. But there's an obvious way. If you, if you were to look at the two, the sort of metal pins of, of the plug, 
sort of face the centre sort of downwards. Try and marry that up. Now, probably can't do this too well on camera, but there's an obvious way that it'll go. And once that in, you should be able to sort of push it together. And there's an obvious click then. Oh, the microphone picked it up. So you push that together, and again, just, just sort of fold in the cable, making sure it's nice and neat. There's no kinks, it's not caught up anywhere. Bring out your flat blade screwdriver again. And now I will do it all up. So I'm not just rushing this for camera and here's one I prepared earlier sort of job. But I was always taught do sort of opposite corners first so it starts to seat nice and gently, but don't do them up too tight until they're all done. That way you can see if it's not lining up properly, it's um it's probably a much neater job and, and, and done properly. So reading through the literature that comes with it, which is unlike me and, and probably most blokes that, that deem it like destructions, you read them once you've deconstructed everything. So I have read through this because obviously I want this video to be as factual as I can. So it's the O2 E2 Pro. It tells you what comes with it. So you've got the actual set, uh, the analyzer itself. You've got a sensor, a dome adapter. So the dome adapter's got this hose barb, which on the O2 E2, it doesn't have that. And it says you can marry this up. Instead of having to put it on the top of your cylinder, you can actually shove this onto a BCD hose and sort of take a, a sample from there, which to me sounds so much easier because if for whatever reason, which I've done several times, I've forgotten to analyze my gas, well, all you have to do is unclip a hose and bang it on the end of there, which rather than doing undoing all my regulators and depending on what configuration I'm wearing, that could be a bit of a nightmare. That's a flipping great idea. Um, and then any accessories that are ordered. Now, what it doesn't come with is a sort of hard case. So I've got this little, it's not a pelly case, but I think most people refer to them as that. I've got this little hard case, bright yellow, and so it stands out in my box. So if I'm looking for my, my analyzer, it lives in there and it's, it's really easy and, and you know to find and, and keep safe. So it gives you a few bits and bats about the sensor handling, you know, about the, this electrochem electrochemical device that contains an acidic electrolyte. So always make sure that it's not leaking. And if it is, I'd probably say it's, it's done, ready for the bin. So there's instructions on how to analyze your gas. I've made another video, so if you're not sure, I'll post that up here so you can see that. But what it does fail to tell you, but is quite important, is how long this sensor is going to last. Because certainly in a rebreather, I can only actually get 12 months out of mine. And I've got to replace four of them every 12 months because I've got a spur just in case one of them does go down. And then three that are being used all the time. And that's quite expensive. Whereas I'll not be using this half as much and I don't want to have to replace it as well as replacing the other four. So I've done some research and looked on their website. So they give a three year graded guarantee. So depending on the temperature it's been used in and the, the frequency of use, it, you should get up to five years. But in five years time, am I gonna remember that I've made this video today showing you that I've put the sensor in here and remember the specific date and I can actually do that? I probably won't. But luckily, I've got one of these little label makers. So I've printed this off and it says replace sensor and then in five years from today, so the 17th of April, 2026. So I'm gonna do is stick that to the top of my box and stick it on there. And then that will remind me that I've still got however many years or months or days or weeks left to, to be able to use this safely. So what I'm gonna do is make sure that it does work now. So there's a, a, an on off button here, I'm gonna press that. And what it does, it comes on and it tells me what it thinks is reading right now. So it's 22.4. So using the dial, we can turn that down. Some people say 20.9, others say 20.21.0. Uh, so by turning the calibration dial, I can turn that round and hopefully we get 21.0. I'll then do one of two things. I'll either turn it off because I'm happy with the fact that it's turning on and it's working, or we're going to do a calibration check. And I think that's wise because I know in here, other than the fact that I'm talking a lot of rubbish, that the air should contain 21% oxygen. So if I've got a known bottle of gas, which I'll have 100% downstairs in my garage, if I go and mount this to that and make sure that this reads 100, I'm pretty confident that a known sort of quantity of gas is being measured exactly the same on, on my new analyzer. And if that's the case, I'd be able to trust this implicitly. And if it wasn't, I'd perhaps question our locks and say, listen, I'm getting a, a different reading on here. Can you help me out? Now, one problem I have encountered um, is that some oxygen or nitrox bottles have a different sized um, valve on them. So some people call it M26 or M25. Now, 
I've been told a hundred times now that that's not correct. But generically, people talk about M25 being for air and M26 for being for nitro. So you may need to get yourself one of these adapters in order to calibrate or, or sort of analyze your gas correctly. So it's got an M26 thread, so that'll go into the oxygen cylinder and it's got an M25 on the other side. So it means that the dome adapter marries up properly and gets a correct reading. Whereas if you don't do that, and this isn't sealed properly, what I've found on 100% oxygen bottles, I'm getting a reading of 107. Now, I can't read that. I, I'm not, you know, a, a sort of gas chemist. I'm not a mathematician that I can work out why it's giving me 107%. But I can guarantee on the surface, I can't get 107% oxygen in a cylinder. So I've bought this. This, oh, the, two, the two combined marry up really neatly and they'll cause me to get the correct reading. And obviously if I need to decant from that or into that cylinder, I've also got this adapter. So I'll keep that with my nitrox analyzer in its box. So that's about it. So you put this away, turn it off, leave it in, in the, and it, it should be safe as houses. A um, couple of points, make sure that you do somewhere, if you've not got a sticky label like this, make, you know, a piece of tape on the back of it that you could write on with, you know, a permanent pen or something like that that you could peel off when it's ready to change. Or keep a note if in your logbook or, you know, even if you keep your instructions in that, that packet, make sure you do annotate on when you've put that sensor in because it is important that you make sure you change it, you know, in accordance with the, the manufacturer's guidelines. Otherwise, you're going to be void of that and you might die. So, <laughs> joking aside though, thanks for watching this video. If it's been of some use to you, please give us a thumbs up. And if you've got any questions, comments or queries, put them in the box below. I always get back to you. And... I really appreciate any feedback that we do get, good or bad, you know, um, I'm always here to learn and, and help you learn at the same time. So thanks for watching, see you on the next one. See you on Insta.